you haven't seen me at this location in a while. This is my home office in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here for the holiday weekend. It's Thanksgiving, and I want to wish you a belated happy Thanksgiving. If you didn't have a chance to hear my Thanksgiving wishes for you last week. It's getting close to the end of the year, and this is a wonderful time for you to gift a friend or a loved one a special one-on-one -on -one spiritual encounter. It's life-changing, and it would be a great time to do it just as we're about to begin the new year. I have a very serious subject I want to talk to you about. If you look to my left, you'll see the picture of a pastor, a woman, Nadia Bowles Weber. Nadia is a Lutheran pastor, and this picture is taken from her Facebook. She has taken a stand and written a book promoting something she calls ethically sourced pornography. And she's now on a mission to remove the shame from looking at pornography. Think about that. A pastor claiming to be a Christian, wanting to remove the shame from people looking at naked couples copulating without even the benefit of marital intimacy. She comes from the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America and last summer was invited to speak to 30,000 young people at a Christian conference. Our children have all been involved in the purity movement, and our book, Set Your Family Free, talks about how to take your children through the purity process and educate them about issues of sexual immorality. Well, this particular pastor says she wants anybody who's been through that sort of thing to throw away their purity rings, and she... I think half seriously, says she'd like to melt those golden rings down and make, as she says, a vagina statue to support feminism. She's no longer pastoring now. She's too busy writing books, traveling, and speaking, and she's been now replaced by a gay Episcopalian pastor who is married to a drag queen. He calls himself the Fruit Bomb. You just can't make this stuff up, can you? And by the way, this pastor, this woman who wants to take away the shame of porn and Christianize porn, is a New York Times best-selling author. Actually, I think she's on to something that is the proliferation of porn in America. So I did some checking on the internet and found out that out of the eight top websites in terms of searches, three of them are porn.com type websites. In fact, more people look at porn than Twitter and Wikipedia. There's a good ministry called Proven Men Ministry that helps men with porn addictions and they publish some recent research it shows that two-thirds of men in America and Christians look at porn at least once a month, and that three out of every 10 in the 18 to 30 age category look at porn daily. And those statistics are about the same for Christians as they are for non-Christians. Remember the old cartoon character Pogo, whose favorite line was, we have met the enemy, and he is us. I think that certainly applies here. Now, this pastor who wants to take away the shame of porn, I could throw at you a bunch of Bible verses, but most of those Bible verses you already know. So this is not a theological discussion. It's a warning about a tectonic shift in the moral viewpoint of American Christianity. So just on a practical basis, as someone who deals with this in encounter and counseling sessions almost every single day, this is the truth about porn. You can't have Christian porn. You can't take away the shame. You can't make it ethically sourced. Pornography destroys marriages. 
It leads to perversion, including incest and child molestation. And it leads to demonization. You look at porn, you're going to get demons. I've got thousands and thousands of case studies of people who did just that, and they ended up demonized. This is a warning to you, my friend. You can't get away from the mortification, the humiliation, and the shame of this kind of behavior. And as for this pastor who calls herself a dyke and takes pleasure in the idea of making pornography acceptable, I think we know what kind of demon she has. And the chief of those demons is Jezebel. And if you've read my book, Jezebel, and you've read the book of Revelation, you know this is Jezebel's assignment to convince people that they can be Christians and look at pornography. But I want to tell you that to do so is to open the door to demons, to shame and self-destruction.